Hello, my name is Derek Kimball, uh, and I'm with Kimball Law, where we practice personal injury and insurance law in Nova Scotia, particularly in the Annapolis Valley and in Metro, uh, with offices in both, uh, both of those areas. I want to talk today a little bit about uh, injuries sustained in, um, in accidents, particularly motor vehicle accidents. Uh, there's no way of predicting what injuries you will sustain in an accident. We have, uh, we have situations with, with high speed, head on collisions, horrific accidents with a lot of damage to vehicles and people literally walk away from them with, uh, with uh, little or no injury. Um, on the other end of the uh, spectrum, we have low impact, low speed, rear ender type accidents in which um, individuals end up having lifelong chronic pain. Uh, so there's no predicting these situations. Clearly, uh, some of your most serious accidents uh, occur in these, these high-speed uh, um, collisions that are associated with, with extensive property damage. But uh, as I've indicated, uh, there's no direct correlation one to the other. It's of particular importance uh, in discussing that that people understand how large an impact uh, concern for your own personal safety is in these circumstances. Use of seatbelts is, um, is, is of vital importance in all those circumstances um, when you're operating a motor vehicle. Uh, again, not to do so is against the law. Uh, if you've been injured and have a claim, a failure to wear your seatbelt at the time of the accident will result in a reduction of your, um, of your uh, claim for compensation, unless you fit within that small category of folks who uh, are not required to wear a seatbelt, uh, which may relate to occupation, um, and also, of course, if uh, if you have medical advice and support for uh, uh, not wearing a seatbelt. Um, but just talk about injuries uh, sustained uh, in the in the uh, in the aftermath of an accident. Uh, it's a pretty uh, uh, exciting time. If you've ever been in an accident, you understand it, it can be a little surreal. Um, the adrenaline is coursing through your your body, and uh, and you're not always aware of all of the uh, effects of the of the accident and particular injuries that you may have sustained. Um, so a couple of of um, words uh, by way of rule of thumb to guide you uh, as you go through this this kind of period. Um, if after an accident, you've, you're at the scene, you've taken care of all those things you should do uh, at, at the accident scene before you leave. Um, you want to be aware of, of your condition and those that, that are with you. If, um, if you're having any symptomology at all or, or the people that are with you in your vehicle uh, are having symptoms of accident injury, you should seek medical attention uh, right away. And um, Sometimes that requires the ambulance ride to the hospital, uh, but sometimes it just means getting yourself to the local ER and having yourself checked out. Some of these injuries can be subtle. They present some symptoms, uh, but we do know that, that uh, in lots of cases, injuries don't manifest themselves completely for some hours and uh, even sometimes a few days after the accident. Generally use the, the rule of thumb of 72 hours. You're going to know that you've got symptoms within, uh, within 72 hours. Um, you're going to know that you've got some injuries within 72 hours, even if in the immediate aftermath of an accident, they're not, they're not apparent. But there's, um, there's injuries such as uh, internal bleeding, um, some, um, some, um, some uh, concussion type closed head injuries. Uh, again, not, not, entirely clear what you may be dealing with uh, immediately afterwards. If you're, if you appear to be symptom free <clears throat> um, and, uh, and don't see the need for medical attention at that time, then you, uh, uh, after taking care of business at the accident scene, go ahead, go on about your day. Uh, but, uh, but be very careful about monitoring your, your situation in the coming uh, hours and several days. Uh, if you notice symptoms that are uh, becoming apparent either later that day or sometimes people wake up the next day and they can't get out of bed because they're so sore, that's when you need to check yourself into the local outpatient 
uh, department or if you've got a, a doctor that can accommodate you, get in to see your, your family doctor. In any event, whether you've been to see the ER folks uh, the day of the accident, uh, immediately afterwards or, or uh, shortly after in the next day or two, you do want to follow up with any symptoms or injuries that you may have with your family doctor in the, in the uh, uh, really as soon as you can, but certainly in the days and, and um, uh, several days and within the week afterwards, if you can possibly arrange that. It's important that you um, um, obtain that medical advice, follow the advice that you've received from um, the ER folks and, uh, and also from your family doctor, because sometimes that immediate advice and treatment can, um, can be a lifesaver if it involves um, uh, taking x-rays and, uh, and those kinds of diagnostics that may detect a fracture that's not immediately apparent. Um, or, or the other types of injuries that may require a more, even a more intrusive um, examination or, or radiology. Uh, but for, we'll call them less serious injuries that seem to involve no fractures, uh, no, uh, no concussion type injury, no um, internal bleeding, anything like that, but just involve a lot of sore muscles, um, then sometimes... Um, very um, immediate um, treatment um, um, with physio or massage, uh, chiropractic. Um, these types types of manual therapies can go a long way in getting you on the road to recovery. So it's important to to be mindful of the advice you receive regarding those things, and then to pursue that kind of advice um, as um, as early as you can. Um, the um, talking about variable timelines for, for injury recovery. There's the acute phase of injuries. Uh, obvious ones are fractures, for example. So if you have a, um, if you have a fracture, um, you'll get that advice usually from an orthopedic specialist who will be in a position to tell you what the usual healing time is of that particular fracture, the kind of treatment you receive. It might involve a cast or some kind of a brace. And um, there's a normal healing time moving forward from the event itself to the day when that, uh, that cast will may come off and, um, and you're back to full mobility um, in those majority of cases where you make, uh, should make a full recovery. But there's a number of injuries that are sustained that result in some level of chronic pain. Chronic pain is any pain that continues beyond the normal recovery time for that particular kind of injury. Uh, a lot of um, injuries that are very common in motor vehicle kind of situations um, involve what they call soft tissue injury. You've heard, no, no doubt, the term whiplash. Whiplash is a particular kind of soft tissue injury, usually associated with the, with the kind of injury sustained by your neck because of this back and forth motion that occurs um, in, in collisions, um, very often the rear end type collision. These kinds of injuries, referred to as soft tissue injuries, are just that. They don't involve uh, fractures, they don't involve typically damage to nerves, it's just muscles and tendons and ligaments that get pulled and stretched and sometimes torn um, in the course of that very violent and immediate um, uh, reaction to to the forces of the collision. Typically, those types of injuries resolve naturally within the days and weeks following, uh, almost uh, uh, completely within the six months time frame following. Beyond six months, uh, those kinds of injuries that have not uh, resolved completely have really entered a chronic a chronic stage or a chronic phase. This actually occurs in a, an appreciable, although minority number of these cases. Uh, some folks just go on to have chronic pain. Um, it's well understood and known in the literature. Uh, it's very unfortunate because some of these kinds of chronic soft tissue injuries can be quite intransigent. Um, it doesn't mean they can't go on to heal further or even go on to complete resolution within a certain time frame, could be a couple of years. 
but in some cases they don't ever fully resolve and people are left with long-standing um, um, symptoms that uh, that can interfere with with work with their domestic responsibilities with their enjoyment of life for 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 many years into the future so uh, there's no predicting what's going to happen to any one of us in these situations. It's really a function of a lot of factors, including the uh, the way your body is able to handle and sustain these kinds of injuries and move you forward to, to hopefully full healing. But that's why it's very important in all these cases to, to uh, listen to your body, pay attention to symptoms that you um, are experiencing in the aftermath of an accident, obtain medical advice and and intervention as soon as possible once you're aware of these symptoms and follow medical advice so that uh, you can be on the road to healing quickly um, and as efficiently and as effectively as that can be can, can be achieved um, if you've been involved in one of these kinds of accidents it's also a good idea if you if you're contemplating making a claim if you think you're entitled to make a claim because the other person was at fault seek legal advice so your lawyer who's experienced in these kinds of cases can intervene very early on um, with you and help guide you in that process moving forward uh, so that your your legal case is paralleling your your medical case uh, keep in mind that there are limitation periods in this province and in other jurisdictions that limit when you can bring an action in nova scotia motor vehicle cases uh, typically must be brought within two years of the date of the accident. There's some exceptions to that, uh, and the ones you have to be particularly concerned about are, are those exceptions that mean you have to bring the action even earlier than two years. So don't delay in, uh, in seeing a lawyer. We like to see people as soon as possible after, after uh, an accident, and I mean in the, in the, uh, in the immediate uh, weeks uh, sometimes days following the accident so that we can give folks guidance about things like the limitation period that's likely to uh, to uh, apply in their case and also to follow up on some of these uh, various issues involving their medical care and the insurance uh, uh, landscape that applies in these kinds of cases so i hope this has been helpful to you and um and this advice will be something you can uh, you can retain and use uh, uh, if you're ever in that kind of a situation.